Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to look into how we work with Heathen Steamworks Complete in terms of setting up networking with Steam. Now in my case, I'm using Fishnet, but you can use any networking system that you'd like. I just have my basic networking manager and then whatever Steam connection component that's required. For Fishnet, it's called Fishy Steamworks. Now the only setup that's really needed here is we tell it which app ID we work on. Now I'm working on the 480, which is the Steam official testing app ID. And I have just enabled peer-to-peer -peer because we are not going to be working with a dedicated server. This is a player-to-player -player connection or a peer to peer which means in this case we have a player acting as a server as well now i already have some pre-setup stuff here first of all i have this connection setup screen this is just my i guess your my main menu in this case there is the host game button which right now does absolutely nothing and there is also a input field and a connect button which also does absolutely nothing what we'll be working with is we click the host game button and it'll open up a game using the fishy steamworks setup and we will be able to write in a sort of hex code in here and click connect this will be an eight digit code and when we press connect we should be able to connect from another computer now it's important for you to know that in order to test networking with steam properly you need either another computer or a virtual computer setup because you need individual steam accounts already running in my case i have my bobsy account right here which is the one i'll be using for this now a way that we can see that the steam connection is already set up is we just press play and you can see the local users loaded like bobsy and i'm in space war now i also have another scene set up which is called connected scene this is just the scene that will be be changed to when the connection has successfully been launched and the id which other players can use to join will be written here now the setup is really rather Symbol. There's only one thing that I've taken the liberty to build out already, which is just a scene manager for Fishnet. This is because this is Fishnet specific and it's not a Fishnet video. Now getting right into the coding, let's go into our scripts folder and start building out the functionality that we need. Now I'm just going to be building a single script, which I'm just going to be calling the connection manager. Now in here, in our connection manager, I'm just going to remove the base functionality here. And one thing that we know that we want is we want to be able to start as a host. So I'm going to make a public void start host. And I'm also going to make a public void that I'm just going to call start connection connection which is going to be for the input first of all in the start host one thing that we want to get is we want to get our own user data so i'm just going to make a new var that i'm going to call user and set that equals to user data dot get my god <laughs> Now the user data dot get really just gets the local steam users data which is what we're going to be utilizing for this now what we can do is we can get the hex which is really simple let me just make a var and i'm going to call this the host hex which this is really just going to be user dot to string this will automatically write the user data over to a string that we can utilize now we actually want to store this hex and it'll make sense in a little bit why we do this. So let me make a private string and I'm just gonna call this host hex and we're gonna remove this one. There we go. Now we are storing this within this connection manager, which this is important for us to do. The next thing that we need is we need a reference to the uh, fishy Steamworks setup or whichever one that you choose to connect to Steam with. So I'm just gonna make a serialized field, private fishy Steamworks in fishy Steamworks. And I'm just gonna call this one fishy Steamworks. I know this was fishy Steamworks a lot of times, but that's unfortunately just how it is. <laughs> and all we need to do now is we just need to start the connection and set that equals to true. And we also need to run the start connection to false. Now, the true and the false in here is really just whether we're running as a server or not. In our case, we want to first be running as a server and then be running as a non-server, which is why we're a host. Let me also move this one up above because I like having my private variables at the bottom. Now, the next thing is we also need a reference for the input field that we have. So let me make another serialized field, private. And in my case, it's a text mesh pro input field. So I'm going to be using the TMP underscore input field. And this one is just going to be the connection input. That's what I'm going to call it. And we're going to be using this down in the start connection. So in our case, for example, we can once again get the host hex and set that equals to the connection input dot text. This will be the text that we've written into the input field. Now, after that, we can get the user. So we can just get the var of host user and I'm going to call it here. And we can grab the user data dot get and just put in the host hex. There we go. And this will pull out the relevant user data which we need to connect to. Now we can make a little check really quickly just to say if the host user dot is, is valid and the little exclamation mark in front to say if it's not valid. We just want to debug log out some kind of error saying that the host user is not valid. This is just a good little safety measure and then we can return. So in case that we don't actually get a user from the input, it'll just tell us and don't do anything. And now we can once again get the fishy steamworks. And in this case, we first want to set the client address so we just do set client address and then we throw in the host user dot id dot to string whoops 
I wrote that wrong, .id, .to string. The reason why it's important that we write the ID is because we need the full CSTM ID, which is a much longer digit than the hex code. So what we're basically doing here is we're just taking the hex code, converting it to a user, and then getting the ID of that user. And now we can just get the fishy steam works, so start connection. And this time we only want to start as false because we're not starting as a server this time, we're only a client. And that should really be it for the connection setup. This should really just work. Now, there's a few things that we still want to do, but we can just go test this one really quickly. So let me go into the connection manager that I have here and just drag and drop the connection manager in that I have here. Now in the scene stuff, I've already set up to automatically handle the scene changing when we connect properly. So this should hopefully work. But let's just put this field in here now. So the input field down here and the fishy steam works is on my network manager. There we go. Let me try and press play host game and well, of course we need to connect the actual button to do something so i'm just going to drag and drop the connection manager in here go to the connection manager here and say start host and we need to do the same thing for the connect button down here that just needs to do the start connection like so and let's try and press play now there we go and as i press host game you can see now i'm in the connected scene and now we just need this id to properly display the correct id in order for other players to be able to join as well so you can actually send them the code with this setup we are completely avoiding using the lobby system which is a big thing in of its own and that will be for different videos so back in the code here i just want to make it really easy for myself to set the id in the other scene so i'm just going to write a private static and this is going to be a connection manager and i'm just going to call it instance then in my awake i'm just going to set the instance equals to this and now i actually move back and forth between scenes so i can just do a quick if the instance is not an all then i want to destroy the existing instance and then replace it with my current one and i also just want to set don't destroy and load to this this means that it will remain between scenes but this up here means that if we go to a connection scene and we go back to the main scene it'll destroy the existing instance and replace it with the new one that's in the scene you can set this up as you'd like this is just a setup that i'm going to use and now i just down here can just make a public static that returns a string and just call that get host hex and this one can just return the instance dot host hex like that and now we can just make a little tiny script and put that on the the actual hex code that needs to be displayed so let me just make a new script and i'm just going to call this connected host id setter or something you can call it whatever you'd like this was just what i came up with and now in the start method what we can do is we can just say try if try get component out the text mesh pro ugi remove all the ones we don't need and i'm just going to call this one tmp this is just to say that we can just throw this component on something that has the text mesh pro already and we can just say tmp.text equals to the connection manager Manager dot get host hex and there we go that should really just work so if we just go into the other scene throw this one on there it should hopefully just automatically set up correctly so let me go into the scenes the connected scene and throw it onto this connected id we we'll just go to scripts this setter and that should be it let's move back to the other scene now make sure up here in your build settings as well that you have set up both the main connection scene as the first one and the connected scene as the second and as i press play now you can see host game and now it'll actually set the id you can then tell this id to other players and they will be able to join using that id so as you can see now i just on my other account which is on my other pc i've just started up i'm gonna click host game over there so now that's connected and then i'm gonna connect to that on this screen press connect and as you can see we've now connected and you can see this is now their host id displaying and this should work just fine and in my case with the scene manager set up as soon as i disconnect you can see i'm just right back to here and we have no errors and things just work this is really all that's required hopefully this makes good sense to you the biggest part of this is really just that you need to get the user data and from the user data you just connect to the id this is really the main thing which makes it work for pretty much any networking system that you want to use whether that's mirror whether it's netcode whether it's fishnet or something completely different all you really need is just to get the id and connect directly to that and it's as simple as that i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do leave a like comment and subscribe thank you so much to heathens for sponsoring the video and i just hope that you guys have a wonderful day